Manila City volunteers show care for 1,300 homeless families after a fire incident. City Malaysia chapter learns to make aerosol box to protect the frontline medical staff. Welcome to Dai Headlines, I'm Maggie Tai. Thank you for joining us. In the Tondo district of Manila, two slums were hit by a major fire, leaving more than 1,300 families homeless during the coronavirus epidemic. City volunteers went to the disaster spot to survey their needs and provide a roster of families that need help for follow-up assistance. Volunteers drove into Happy Land in Tondo district, which was recently struck by fire. The road is filled with households who are lucky to be saved, with some even sleeping in this island between the road. We can't go to a shelter because it's already full. We have to stay here temporarily. The shelters arranged by the government are already overcrowded, and the affected families who have no place to live have to sleep in the streets. Our masks, clothes and children's milk powder have all been burned out. Hopefully, Chi can help us out. This area was originally a slum, and during movement restriction orders associated with the epidemic, more than 1,000 families lost their shelter and find it hard to survive. Almost all of them escaped like this. They did not bring anything with them, not to mention the masks they need to wear. All they have are the clothes that they are currently wearing, just one set. <laughs> They survivors now mostly masks, food, drinking water, paper diapers, toothbrushes, toothpaste, towels and underwear. Volunteers not only go to the borough office to learn about the situation, but also enter the fire scene to care for the victims. They will work out a follow-up plan to provide the fastest relief possible. The situation of the victims is very complicated. When distribution material aid, we need to start thinking about what level of contact is possible to follow epidemic prevention regulations, how to maintain a good social distance to prevent the spread of the epidemic. During this epidemic prevention period, volunteers must take more considerations into effect to provide a more complete assistance plan. This will ensure that volunteers are safe and can also provide appropriate assistance to the affected households. Armark City in the Philippines was closed for the pandemic since mid-March, impacting the lives of many Grela villagers. After hosting several rice distributions, Tiji volunteers assisted the farmers in the village to harvest vegetables and brought these crops that could not be sold to the families in need while advocating vegetarianism. Under the bright sun, a group of young people are busy harvesting vegetables. There are chichings and volunteers in Omic Great Love Village. We are harvesting vegetables to be given to the elders and families in need in the Great Love Village. Because of city closure for epidemic prevention, farmers in Omic Great Love Village cannot sell their harvest. So Chiji brought it and let volunteers give it to the impoverished families in the village. I'm grateful for Tsuji's continuous assistance over three years, especially during the epidemic. They send us vegetables and rice, so we do not need to worry about food. Thank you so much. Thank you volunteers for sending us vegetables so I can cook them for dinner for my kids. They just ate and said it was delicious. Thank you very much. Knowing that Chiji is helping the villagers, Benji also contributes his part and donates 20 kilograms of long beans. Fortunately, Zhiji bought our vegetables and gave them to the disadvantaged villagers. This is very good. While distributing vegetables, volunteers also promote vegetarianism. The three-year-old Chris is a super fan. My kids love to eat vegetables since youth. Vegetarian diet makes him grow up strong and healthy. Master Jing encourages old people to adopt a vegetarian diet because many diseases arise from animals. If we become a vegetarian, this will reduce the killing of animals and save the earth. Now in this epidemic prevention period, we can also fight against the virus. Although the epidemic makes great love villagers stay at home, their hearts are united, showing love and mutual help in the neighborhood. South African government has extended the lockdown restrictions till the end of April. City volunteers prepared 2,000 bags of food for the impoverished families near Johannesburg. 
In the near future, new supplies will arrive and will be sent to the families in need. Volunteers are busy picking food on sunny day with a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. South Africa's lockdown will be extended till the end of April. Concerned about disadvantaged groups' food shortage problem, Johannesburg City volunteers prepare food to them. A counselor from Mid Rain also came to pick up the supplies to help orphans and solitary seniors. Some of the living conditions are very bad. Uh, we really uh, want to uh, support the people who are struggling now, giving them food to nourish the mind mm -hmm. and the soul and then also to give them cleaning materials to make mm. sure that their shack or their mm -hmm. house is, is clean. Because of lockdown, volunteers must have permit to go out. The permit for this day is to go to Topisa community. Volunteers have distributed more than 50 supplies packages to families in need. Uh, her husband right now went out to work, but unfortunately during the lockdown she couldn't come, he couldn't come back to work. So he has been gone and he cannot find any transport or any means to come back home. So life has been very difficult for them. Fatima is a street vendor and her family lives in Mozambique. After lockdown, her life has been difficult and her family in her hometown also suffers. She's unable to go and sell her, her business. She runs a small business, but she's unable to, to conduct that business due to the coronavirus. City South Africa chapter has distributed the first batch of 2,000 supplies. It is expected that another batch of supplies will arrive next week and will be distributed as soon as possible so that families with financial difficulties can get help. After Cyclone died, the 100-year-old Marara Kwal Elementary School in the 8th District of Zimbabwe saw the school's roof and a wall blown down. Since September last year, the city sent building materials to assist in the reconstruction. Now the repair work is almost completed. After the disaster associated with Cyclone E-Day, the Central Marikwa Elementary School in Zimbabwe experienced an extreme destruction ranging from the roof to a surrounding wall. Almost nothing was left intact. For half a year, the school buildings are being renovated one after another. But on this day, volunteers started their last project. helping others, so when they are recruiting volunteers, I came to help paint the school. I choose to join in right away. I'm very grateful for Siji's help for us. We keep traveling back and forth to get water and help cleaning. I'm very happy that Chiji provided us with these building materials. I'm also happy that volunteers help us with reconstructions. Now our walls are nearly completed and I am really happy now. The new classroom, painted in blue, appears very colorful under the sky. This indicates that children will enjoy many more opportunities under this expansive sky. City volunteers in Chiang Mai, Thailand went to countryside to care for residents. Although residents did not have income recently due to the epidemic, they still made the same donation as before to help other suffering people. Chiji volunteers go to the countryside to collect donations. The residents there are willing to donate money to do good deeds together. <laughs> this time, volunteers specially bring with reusable cups and recycling bags to advocate the correct concept of environmental protection. You need to bring our own cup when going out to prevent getting infected. Many residents in the country still have the habit of sharing cups. This worries me a lot. I'm afraid that we'll get infected. 
children volunteers in Chiang Mai sold nuggets for charity and used the earnings to buy reusable cups and bags, as well as daily supplies for residents. This 93-year-old grandpa also received a gift. <coughs> Affected by the epidemic, their income is less than before, but the donation is still the same. The rice and sugar sent by the volunteers are practical and considerate. Recently, they don't have income. In the past, it was the farmer who helped us plow and then send them rice. At the moment of severe epidemic, they help each other to overcome difficulties. So bugs, which was invented by an anesthesiologist at Menonan Christian Hospital in Hualien, Taiwan, can reduce the risk of medical staff's infection during intubation. The simple invention was widely used internationally during the epidemic. The Tsiji Malaysia chapter also started to produce it to safeguard the health of medical personnel. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 pandemic is still high, 3% of which are critical patients. They are doing emergency intubation or when taking a sample of the nose and throat. The patient suddenly coughs, some droplets can spread out and infect our medical staff. Frontline medical personnel grabs every second to save lives, but there are many potential risks. The invention of simple aerosol box enhances global epidemic prevention. In places where medical resources are scarce or patients are overloaded, being able to allow frontline medical personnel to use it quickly is the greatest value of this device. This aerosol box is made of acrylic covering a patient's head during intubation. Our hands can be inserted in it, while for the patient, all his respiratory droplets will spray directly inside this box. The aerosol box is invented by Dr. Lai Xianyong from Huanan Mennonite Christian Hospital, Taiwan, and is globally used because of its simplicity and convenience. In Penang, Malaysia, a factory takes the responsibility to produce this protective box. At present, we have already produced about 200 boxes and sent out 125 boxes to Penang City, Berlin City, Kedah, Perak, the East Coast and also to Johor. As long as we can protect these medical personnel, we will give our full support. To medical personnel, this aerosol box is very precious and valuable. There's actually some help during the intubation process. It can prevent aerosol from spreading to the chief doctor doing intubation and the assistants. Sincere love and care is provided by GG volunteers who are paying tribute to the heroes of the medical community who are bravely guarding the lives of others. To his frontline medical personnel's worries when treating patients, Malaysia Tsiji Chapter has asked volunteers from 22 different communities to consume to help make protection gowns, health covers, as well as booties. After city volunteers and community volunteers came together to make face shields and reusable masks, they are now moving on to protection gowns. First, the fabric is cut into pattern with a machine. We heard that personal protection gowns are in dire need. They use a great amount each day. We are a small business and we can at most process 10 rolls of fabric which cuts about 900 sets of gowns. After it's cut, the pieces need to be delivered to have someone assemble it together. That takes a few days each day when we start working. It feels like we don't have enough time to do everything. When we heard they didn't have enough gowns to protect themselves, we didn't have a choice. By coming here each day, we are happy to help. These gowns are for the frontline medical workers. And also, the master has said that they work very hard. So since we can't be at the front lines, we should be there to support them. Those who receive the sewing bundle quickly begin to sew the PPE together. Yeah. 
as the first batch of 50 gowns were completed and packed. Siji volunteers sent it to Hospital Sibiran Jaya in Butterworth. Those who treat COVID-19 patients need about 300 personal protection equipment each day, but it's just an estimate. It really depends on the patients each day. I'm very grateful. These supplies are really helpful, especially those who are on the front lines. Helping to ease medical supplies, Siji continues to look out for medical personnel working on the front line. Shi Guizhang, the former chairperson of Shidong Market in Taipei, went on a vegetarian diet for three days after a call from the president of the Longshan Temple Council. Let's see her effort to promote vegetarianism at the market. This is a vegetarian whip with curry and rice in a meal box to support a call for eating vegetarian food to prevent the epidemic. The former chairperson of the Shidong Market in Taipei starts a three-day vegetarian campaign. Longshan Temple held a three-day vegetarian campaign, so I felt this was a good chance to encourage people to be vegetarian and love the earth. Under her good thoughts, all kinds of support also appeared. A good friend who owns a vegetarian restaurant made boxes meals. Local city volunteers also helped deliver them. I support the wish of the president of Longshan Temple Council. From today, I will be a vegetarian for three days. It is for my own health. It can clean my body and make it light, and the killing of animals for food will be reduced. 200 vegetarian box meals a day can help people reduce their burdens from eating meat. It can also gather more power of goodness as people pray for the epidemic to end soon. At the end of March, San Chong Siji volunteers sent a batch of cloth masks to the Yongfu Elementary School. Volunteers then proposed coming to the school to promote vegetarianism, which the school gladly accepted. In the kitchen of Siji San Chong grounds, volunteers were busy preparing lunch boxes early in the morning. Apple is one of the ingredients carefully prepared by volunteers today. Apples represent peace. During the epidemic, we pray for safety. If we want to promote vegetarianism, we need simple nutrition and delicious meals. Volunteers intend to send these lunch boxes to Yongfu Elementary School, hoping to promote the vegetarianism on campus. We hope to plant a good seed in a teacher's heart. We hope they can experience the delicious vegetarian diet and the intention of protecting animals. Then, disaster can quickly be eliminated. After being a vegetarian, my body feels less burden and my physical strength is better than before. Now I also hope that more friends will join us to eat vegetarian food or vegetarian diet together. During the epidemic, reducing appetite and protecting life not only leads to an eco-friendly lifestyle, but also reduces the chance of getting sick from the food we eat. A pair of young women in Tainan City to launch a rental service for plastic cups. Originally, both of them were industrial designers who decided to design environmental-friendly containers that meet the needs of eco-conscious consumers and stores. Their philosophy is to develop a healthy and long-term relationship between people and goods. Do you often buy takeaway drinks? Do you think it is very environmentally friendly to use paper cups for beverages? In fact, a plastic layer is added to each paper cup to prevent the paper cup from weakening after being wet. If you want to change this way of life, there are actually better ways. Wow, 
都半糖。好、oh. ，好 ，OK。那你要不要使用我们的租借容器？好，好，是这个吗？对，好。那你可以那个加入他们的 LINE， 然后输入我们的店铺代号，就可以免费借杯子。This program seems like the U-bike of the food container industry. Through this container rental program, consumers are given another choice. Consumers can also use recyclable cups, borrowing from place A, returning to place B without a deposit. This is a type of social experiment with many shops in the eastern district of Tainan City responding positively. Most stores that cooperate with us at this stage are conscious about this issue as they believe we should not treat our environment like this. There is one store that if you don't bring your own container, they will not sell to you. We think the dawn is coming bringing hope that someone is willing to fight against this convenient lifestyle. This environmentally friendly container leasing company has two founders, Song Yizhen and Li Yihe. Two were classmates studying industrial design. After graduating from university, they entered the 3C industry, but saw the painful truth and the heartbreak of product manufacturing process. 就是工业设计，其实它就是一个这个消费主义的一个推手。会 Industrial design actually has a lot to do with consumerism. They push you to always buy something and get something new. We ourselves don't want to be a designer like this. I want to design something that is very durable and easy to use, and encourage people to keep using my design. After changing their minds about industrial design, Li Yihe and Song Yizhen chose to start a business near National Tenkong University in 2016. They first connected more than 10 stores in the lively Zhenxing Street in Tainan City to launch a Zhenxing Cup project to rent cups. They started with transparent, clean-looking glass, but then changed to plastic cup made from PP and silicon because it takes up less storage space. Every loaned cup from loan to return uses a QR code to track the flow of the cup. Uses an honor system to return the cup, with current cup loss rate being about 6%. The industry is not afraid of consumers not returning the cups, but the biggest problem turns out to be cleaning. Over the past three years of business operation, the cumulative cup usage has risen from 500 to more than 30,000. This has reduced the consumption of many disposable items. Some say that there is no way to make money in this industry, but what they have earned is respect for many environmentally friendly consumers. When you increase environmental costs, like this kind of garbage that won't decompose for thousands of years, is the cost really low for our environment? Is this possible that many people don't care? Maybe they do not notice because everyone thinks that as long as you send it to the garbage truck, your task is complete. But actually, this is not true at all. Going shopping or visiting a night market with environmental consciousness in mind is now easier by using these reusable cups, which have been perfected after many different trials and planning. In the future, many hope these products can become more readily available. Zixi Chicago Chapter hosted a Midwest Zixi Camp through online games and VR tour and live streams to connect everyone. Take a look and see you next time.